Okay, welcome to part four or five of this tutorial series. In this video, we are going to be attempting to create the entire API interface file in the other site folder, uh, and that's why we're looking at that folder now. Um, this is definitely the most complicated part of the sort of tutorial. Um, so sort of the main reason why I'm doing it is because of this. So. Let's just get started really. So we're going to get the API interface file open. At the moment it has no PHP code in um, and it's just going to be a pure PHP file. Not very long, 49 lines it should be by the end. Um, so yeah, um, what we're going to do is create a new class. Uh, a class in PHP is not something that I will be explaining in this video because the only reason we're using it here is to contain the system that we're providing and keep it separate from any other stuff that the sort of other user, mystery user may have sort of on their site. Um, like you could you end up with variable collisions, function name collisions. So we have one class that contains all of the functions. Um, and also it's a sort of a nice way to kind of hide things from the user. So it only exposes two of its functions, however there are three and it also has a constant which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, it's not a very complicated concept. Um, if you think about it as something that contains functions, then that's probably the best for this video anyway, because we're going to be using static functions. Um, there are functions that are not static, but I'll, we're not doing object-oriented orientated programming at the moment. So um, if we ever get to that, I'll explain it in more detail there. Okay, so what we need to do to define a new class is use the class keyword. And the name of the class we're going to use is URL um, shortener. And then you just do a curly block it, a curly block it, a curly bracket block, like so, to denote sort of the what's in the class. Um, and inside this class, we are going to have um, a constant, which you define using the const keyword. You don't use the define function like you would for a normal constant. Use const um, and then a space and then the name of the constant, which is going to be API URL and then a space equals. So it's sort of like a variable in a way. Um, and what this is going to be equal to is the URL to the API script that we created a moment ago. So it's the URL to this file. So I'm going to take this year full URL, just copy it and paste it into our page like so. Obviously what this would already be set when you supply this as a downloadable script so the user wouldn't have to edit this manually um, it's just like so you could it's ni nice to keep it out of the code like the main function code. Okay so what we're going to do next is create the two functions that we're going to be sort of allowing the user to use um, and we're going to make sure that they're allowed to use them by making them public what public means is that they will be callable outside of this class. Um, there's also a private function, which we'll talk about in a moment. And then we're going to use the static keyword, followed by the function keyword, just to define a new function. The static keyword just means that um, static keyword means that the function should be called should be treated as a standard function. It shouldn't be treated as a method in the class. So it shouldn't be an object oriented fun orientated function, it's just a static function. Um, so then we use the function keyword to denote a function, and the function name we're going to give it is lookup. Like so. Uh, it's going to take one parameter, which is going to be the key, which is the key they want to look up and get the URL for. So let's just comment what this does. Um, gets the URL for the given key and what this will do is it will send some post data to our API page here and process the response to get the URL and return that as an array well that and the key you supply um, the next function is going to be shorten which we're going to define static as well and public so public static function shorten um, that's going to take one parameter which is the URL and it's going to do some things in here um, and what we are going to do here is comment it. Uh, let's just call, let's say um, shortens a URL like so. 
um, and obviously the other script. So this is sort of a, basically building a library file. Okay, so the final function is a private one. So we use the private keyword. So private is also static, and it's a function. I've spelled static wrong. Uh, and this is going to be send post data, and this will be a function that the two two functions below use uh, to sort of interact with our API. So let's comment this saying internal function for sending post data, because both of these functions need to send post data. It kind of makes sense. Um, was that? No, wait, what? Hang on. Yeah, that is right. It looks strange. Anyway, um, yeah, um, yeah. So because both of these functions need to send post data, it makes sense for us to create a function to deal with sending that post data instead of opening a socket manually in both of these functions. So let's demonstrate um, sort of what these will do. So let's just have echo private. Actually, no. Let's echo the function name. So send post data, and then in this function we will echo. Oops. Look up. Look up. Oh. There. And this final one we will echo shorten. I thought I had that right. Anyway. So then if we go to our test page and just at the top I'm going to include this file as we usually do in one line mode. Include API interface dot ink.php with quotes needs quotes right so that's that done if we go to our page now uh, obviously we'll need to go back out of here into the other site folder and the test page so we don't get any errors which is super so now in this body if I open a PHP block like so and if I call okay the way you call uh, a static function in a class is first by the class name so URL shortener, like so, and then two of these, two, two colons, it has a proper name which I can't pronounce, um, and then the function name inside the class, so lookup would be an example. Um, just give it something because it has a parameter. So if we uh, reload this page now, you see we get lookup, because this is called this function, and we've got output lookup, and if I now do shorten, shorten, we will get the shorten um, output, but if I change this to um, send post data, we'll get PHP error. Uh, call to undefined method. No, oh, hang on. That sh seems to be the wrong error. Yeah, post date, not data. Right. Fatal error. Call to private method. Um, from I don't really understand what this from context bit is, but anyway, um, basically what it means is you can't. It's telling you that you can't call a private method um, because we. This is a private function. Method and function mean the same thing inside a class. So we define it as private, meaning it can't be called from here. But from the lookup function, say in lookup, if I did okay, uh, introducing a new thing, self. The self keyword represents the current class. So if I do self send post data let's just give it that because it needs a parameter now maybe that's why that was a little weird no, I gave it a parameter anyway but now if I now call which one did I do look if I call lookup now you see we'll get the output a send post data I'm not sure why we're getting a why are we getting a that is okay well fair enough um so yeah that's that um okay sorry moving on <laughs> oh there it is found it okay i had an a at the end of my file that's better right <laughs> no, confuse me for a moment anyway uh, what was i saying right um so now we're getting send post data so you're allowed to call this function from within the function in the class sorry um from within un within another class function and this self keyword points to the current class so that self keyword is basically the same as having that so is also allowed but self it looks a bit smaller a bit smaller a bit nicer a bit neater 
Okay, so I think what we'll do next is, yeah, make a start on, let's just clear these silly lines because they don't really mean anything. Let's make a start on uh, the send post data function. So in this function, what we need to do is open a socket connection, which is like a connection to a dove, to a server in a way, in PHP, um, and then send write the raw HTTP headers to that socket, and then see what the server has as a reply for us. So just take it step by step. It's quite a complicated thing. Um, the first thing we need to do is get like break down this URL into its component parts because you don't open a, f a socket connection to this full URL you open a socket connection to this address and then you send a post header a post request a post HTTP request to this sort of path at this server so the way we do that is well the way we're going to do this is using the parse URL function so we're going to define URL is equal to pass URL API URL. And what this will do is sort of get the component parts of the URL. So if I just add print underscore R URL, which will display the array in a nice format, and if I add self um, send post data here, um, we'll just, let's see, let's give it a nice Okay, let's actually s define the... No, okay, let's just for now just do that. Sorry, I'm not really making any sense there. Um, we are still calling the lookup function, I believe. So let's refresh this page. Use the undefined constant API URL. Oh, right. Class constants. Um, you have to specify the class as well. Sorry about this. Um, so in this case, it would be self, like so. Or from outside of the class, it would be URL shortener then two semi -co two colons and then the con constant name so that's how class constants work they're you, they're not they're sort of internal to the class anyway this is the response we're getting from the parse url function we get the scheme which is http we don't really mean anything we're going to be ignoring that we get the host which is the important part and the path which is another important part so you can see from the url that this was the sort of server name and this was the sort of query string sort of the bit after the server name. <laughs> um, we're going to be using that to um, open a socket and as part of the header that we're going to be sending. So what we need to do is we're going to make this function take an array of post data in a way that the keys represents like the, p the name. Okay, say if you had the input type irrelevant <laughs> so text name equals thing and then you gave it of what you like typed in a value. Well, we could specify value equals val. Then we want it so that the key of the data array. So we had data equals array. We want it so the key is the name, so thing, and it points to the value, which in this case will be val. So this is what we want. We want to be passing to this function like this. This is what we want to pass the function as an argument, so it would go here. Um, and this is the way we want this function to interpret it. So what this means is this function will do the equivalent of submitting a form like this. So hopefully that's understandable. So let's just remove all this. And then in this thing here, we are going to be actually sending the post data. So what we want to send is the lookup. Remember the form we had input type text name equals lookup so we want to send the lookup sort of post key post variable so lookup points to the key they give us because that will mean that the value is like typing this in the form and hitting submit and the name of the form element is lookup but uh, I'm gonna leave that here because I've just looked at the timer and we're at 14 minutes and 30 seconds so hopefully you've understood what's going on so far. Um, and join me in part 5 or 6 or 4. Um, and I'll finish this, well, I'll get a bit further with this function. Okay, so thanks for watching and join me in part 4.